The other week, I did a video on an application known as 30, which describes itself as an open source messaging browser. Now, a messaging browser is basically taking advantage of the fact that most chat applications have a web app. So it basically allows you to bring all of these chat apps into one location, effectively being a meta chat app. But one of the common complaints I saw about 30 is that it was really, really resource intensive. This is partially because it's an Electron application, but also because it had a bunch of extra features that I personally would never actually find myself using. Things like integration with to-do services, which I would just do locally anyway. Now, today's application, Rambox, is still an Electron app, but it is considerably lighter, and I'll show you how much lighter in just a bit. Now, one thing to note about Rambox is that I am using the Community Edition, firstly because it's free, secondly because it's the only open source version licensed under the GPL. There is also a proprietary paid version, which is going to address a lot of the problems that I bring up in this video, but because this is effectively a glorified web browser, there is not a chance in hell that I'm going to pay for that, especially when the direct competition is completely free. Now, before we get into anything else with Rambox, the first thing we're going to want to do is add in some sort of service because that's the whole point of the application. So let's say I want to go and use Element, for example. So we can go and find it in the list here. So it's right here, or we can go and search it. And as we can see, it is located right here. Now, if something isn't in the list, we can go and make a custom service as well, but we'll get into that in just a bit. So if we go and click on Element, it's going to go and prompt us to actually define that service. So you can go and give that service a name if, say, you have multiple accounts logged into the same service and want some way to actually distinguish it inside of the interface. Now, you don't actually have to give it a custom name if you do that, but it is an option there to make it easier to manage. Now, in the case of Element, there is actually an official instance, but you may also want to go and use one of the custom instances as well. So if you want to go use one of those, what you go and do is click on the drop down here, click on custom server, then you can actually go and put in whatever link you want to use. In in my case though, I'm just going to use the official server and most people probably use that as well. Under that, we also have a couple of options we can do, like setting where we want it to appear inside of the Rambox interface, whether we want to have notifications and things like that. In my case, I typically disable anything related to notifications because I find them kind of annoying to have. Then under that, we have an advanced section, and I'll go into that in just a bit. So let's go and add element, and as we can see, that service has now been added into our list, and now it's opened up. So from here, I could go and log into my Matrix account, and then use it as if I was inside of just any sort of regular web browser. Now, that screen where you can add a service is what you'll see when you first open up the application, but if you ever need to get back to that, all you do is go click on the Rambox icon up in the top corner, and then that will take you to that screen. Now, let's go and add in a custom service. So anything you go and search for is going to have custom service as one of the options you can pick, just to make sure you always know it's there. So let's go and click on that one. And from here, we have to go and set all of the information ourselves. So I'm going to go and use, let's say, Hive Blog like I did last time pass in the link for that one, and then we can also go pass in a link to a logo. In this case, I'm not going to bother with the logo though, but if you want to, you can go and do that. And then the options that we have are basically all the same, except we also have a trust in valid authority certificates, just to make sure that if you pass in a link that doesn't have SSL set up properly, it will still work. Now, this custom code section under advanced, what this lets you do is inject JavaScript code into the web page. So if you want to do something like remove the ads, or you want to go and add some custom CSS for a dark theme or anything like that, that is how you would go and do that. Now, it is going to be a bit fiddly because it's all going to be in JavaScript, but it's still better than having no option whatsoever. So I'm not going to bother with that, and let's go and add the custom service. So as we can see, that one has been added now, and it will take a while to load the first time you try to load it, and actually worked quicker than I expected. So that is working exactly as I would want it to. Now, there's one weird thing about this service list. So inside of here, we can't actually go and reorder stuff. No matter what we do, there's no like buttons on the side or anything like that. It can't be reordered. If you want to go and reorder stuff, it has to be done from inside of your tab list. Now, why it's like that, I have no idea. Now, at any point, we can go and modify one of the services under the enabled services list by going and clicking on the cog icon in here, and that'll show you the exact same settings you saw when you first made that service. Now, you can also right-click on the services inside of the tab bar, 
but it doesn't actually show you that same option. However, we can do things like open up the dev tools if for whatever reason you need to see those. Now we can also go and individually disable and delete services. So if we go and delete something, let's say we want to delete the Hive blog, for example, if we ever want to go and use that again, we'll now have to go and re-add that service. But if we go and disable something, let's say we disable element, it'll just be taken outside of the tab list and it won't actually be loaded up by RAM box, saving us a bit of RAM if we don't need to actually use it. And if you want to effectively wipe the application, there is also a button to delete all of your services. Now do keep in mind that there isn't actually an undo, so make sure you don't do this by mistake. Now, when you first open up Rambox, you may notice that my interface looks a little bit differently to yours. So by default, it's going to have a top bar, and then everything in the bar is going to have its name listed out. So if you want to go and fix that, what you can go and do is go into the settings menu, which you can get to from this cog on the add service screen, or you can also get to it with the top bar by going into the file and then preferences. So from here, you can modify things like the service bar location to go and change that to whichever side you want it to be on. Now, if this had a dark mode, I would prefer this interface to what you get with 30. I feel like the interface is a little bit sleeker here and a bit easier to work with compared to having like an add button that you go through like a bunch of different menus just to find stuff. Having everything on one screen, I think is just a better way to do it. Now, I still don't care about this feature, but if you want to go and make an account and then sync all of your services between multiple devices, that can be done. I still recommend against doing it. If you want to go and sync your services, it's easy enough to just go and copy the data files, or you probably don't have that many services anyway, and just set them up by hand. It's not that difficult. Like with 30, this does also have a do not disturb mode, but because I go and disable my notifications all the time anyway, it doesn't really matter that much to me. And like 30 as well, it also has a lock mode. So lock basically is going to make you set a password. I'm just going to set it to something very simple. And then it's going to make you actually put that in again, just to make sure you know the password. And then from here, for someone to actually go and see your services, they'll then have to go and put the password in and unlock the application. I don't see the point of this unless you never use your services outside of Rambox because if you have them logged in in a web browser for example they could just go to the web browser. There's the big question of performance so on my system Rambox certainly feels faster and I've got a pretty decent system so on a laptop from like five years ago for example there probably would be a much greater difference but let's actually go and see how many system resources are being used so to be fair to 30 i am just running it with one service open so on both of them i only have tweet deck open let's go and open up htop and see how many system resources are being used so for 30 it is using 994 megs of virtual memory and 233 megs of physical memory and then for rambox that is using 681 virtual memory and 156 physical memory, so about a half or two-thirds as much RAM. The gap may grow or shrink depending on the number of services you have in it, but this is already a really big head start for Rambox. Now, if you don't care about any of the other things that 30 can do, then Rambox is an amazing application. But let's go over some of the less obvious differences between the two applications. While they both have the option to exist inside of your system tray, I've noticed that it only seems to work inside of Rambox. I don't know what the deal is there. It's it's not a, a big deal because 30 always opens up basically instantly anyway, but it is kind of weird. I mentioned this before, but Rambox doesn't actually have a dark mode. Well, it does have a dark mode, but it's in the paid version. In 30, it's completely free. Also, 30 has the option to just inject a general dark theme into every website, whereas in Rambox, you have to go and write that yourself every single time. Now, while there is this do not disturb option, 30 also has the option to do a timed do not disturb. So let's say you don't want to receive notifications between, I don't know, 5 a.m. and 12 p.m., for example. You can do that in Rambox, once again, in the paid version. 30 also has a quick switcher, which basically allows you to easily jump between any of your services at the press of a key. In Rambox, though, this functionality is in the paid version. 30 also lets you go and search for some text on the page. Now, I wouldn't use this super often, but when I do need it, it is really, really useful. Rambox, it's in the paid version. 30 also has spell checking built into it, which is pretty useful when your spelling is really, really bad. It's not like the spell check is super amazing, but it's still better than nothing. Rambox, 
in the paid version. And Rambox has a bunch of other really useful features that are just behind a paywall, which seems really weird when your direct competition has a lot of these features completely for free. I don't know what exactly their business model is here, but it seems to be working for them, I guess. Now, from what I understand, even the paid version of Rambox doesn't have support for grouping. So over on 30, I have a group for my main stuff and a group for my podcast stuff, basically so I don't have, like, multiple instances of Mastodon and Twitter. It's just an easier way for me to work, and that's completely missing here. Now, for me, I'll be sticking with 30 because I don't really care about the extra RAM usage. Having that grouping there is fundamental to the way that I work. If that one feature was there, I would be more than happy to swap over to Rambox. I don't even really care about not having a dark theme. That is just, like, a little pet peeve of mine, but... The grouping there is really, really useful. However, Rambox is still a really good application, and I can fully understand why some people wanted me to check this out. I think that's going to be everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Will, Brennan, Chica, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Mitchell, Peter, D, Stephen, Thuro, Tony, Tushar, and all of my two dollars supporters. If you'd like to go support or work the links down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, Libra all that sort of stuff, I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere, and then this channel is available on Odyssey if you'd like to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out. <laughs>